In my opinion, creating a beautiful space cheaply is truly a talent. Cheap doesn't have to have a negative connotation. So in today's video, I'm going to chat about a few instances in which you should be cheap when it comes to designing your home because no one's gonna know. So why spend more money when you could save it? Before we get into today's video, please don't forget to smash that subscribe button, but let's get into it. Now this first one just makes me seem like a hypocrite, but yes, do as I say, not as I do. The first thing I think you should be cheap on is the mirror. So is this an $1,800 mirror? Yes moment of silence, please. I'm not really actually talking about these grand floor mirrors. I think they're worth the splurge, but for your normal mirror that sits above your console table, your vanity mirror, the mirrors on either side of your nightstand, there is no reason in my opinion those should ever, ever, ever be above $300. Now, am I saying that you should buy those mirrors that you get like for the dorm rooms, the ones that like you look in them funny and they start cracking? No, because a broken mirror is horrible luck and if you're doing that, I don't wanna be around you, but Mirrors don't have a reason to be expensive. I think it's all about how you upcycle the mirror. Mirrors are probably one of the easiest things to upcycle. Now there are caveats to everything. What I'm talking about is the frameless mirror. If you're going for a very contemporary rear, a modern mirror, a basic wooden mirror, in my opinion, there is no reason to splurge. If you're going with like a basic metal frame, if you don't like the metal frame, simply rub and buff it. If you want that frameless mirror to look more ornate, add some gilding to it, add some gold leaf to it, add some ornate wall decal house to it. There are so many ways to upcycle that mirror that is going to be more affordable than buying a more expensive one. One thing I will say is unless you're going for a mirror that has like an ornate detail, so like I have a mirror in my entryway from CB2 that is like kind of like an amoeba and it's like a hammered metal. That one was I think like $350 originally. I got it on sale. That to me is worth the splurge because it's something unique. But if you're going to a simple black arch mirror and there's one that's $600 and there's one that's $150, to me it just doesn't doesn't make any sense. Next, we're gonna talk about bookcases. So, bookcases are so expensive. And these days, people don't even put books on bookcases and it makes me wanna cry. Like, yes, do I use my Kindle? But it still makes me a little bit sad because all these poor books with nowhere to go. Anyway, bookcases can get really expensive. Even the Billy bookcase from Ikea now is not just a couple of dollars like it used to be. And I think that really, really expensive bookcases aren't necessarily worth the price. The only company that I truly believe I would buy an expensive bookcase from is actually Our House because they're the only brand that makes really, really sturdy furniture that I never, ever, ever feel like is going to scratch or fall over. When it comes to a basic bookcase, it really is all about how you style the bookcase and less so the bookcase yourself. I think you're better off going going to Ikea and getting the Hofsta or getting the Billy or getting the Hemness or the Brimness or whatever collection you know your Ikea actually has in stock and upcycling that is a lot more fruitful than buying a thousand dollar bookcase from somewhere else. A bookcase is a bookcase. Unless it is fluted or something like that, it's very basic. You can install your own lighting. You can install your own fluting, honestly, in my opinion. You can install your own mirrors and it doesn't come with the decor. I think we fall into this trap where we're like, oh, this is styled beautifully on the website. Well, when they actually send you the piece of furniture, it doesn't come with any of those things they set it with. It doesn't come with the sofa, the books, the plants, the cute dog in the photo. It doesn't come with any of that. So I think it actually makes a lot more sense to be cheap. And the way that you get these things to be sturdy when they're cheaper is you just bolt them into the wall. The next thing I think you should be cheap on is the dining chair. Now, in one of my more recent videos, I asked you if you ate at your dining table versus the island. And most of you said you actually ate at the island. So in my opinion, you should spend money on your island chairs. That's where you're sitting all the time. That's that's what you actually want to be comfortable. The dining table for most people, unless you have a large family, is reserved for holidays, right? And honestly, we don't want people staying in our house for eight plus hours eating the same plate of food. Go home, go home, Thanksgiving is over, go home. <laughs> Thank you for visiting. I love seeing you, but please exit my residence, right? So we don't want it to be too comfortable, but let me be serious here. If we're not spending a lot of time in that space, we shouldn't put a lot of our money there. When we're designing our homes, we always want to put the most amount of money into the spaces that we occupy the most. I'd rather you spend a bunch of money on a sofa that is a performance fabric, it's super comfortable, it's low maintenance, your cat doesn't scratch, that you sit on for you know eight hours a day, as opposed to a dining chair that you only come to see I don't know, four times a year. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Dining chairs are also very, very, very easily subject to damage, right? Because people get rowdy over dinner, they get drunk, 
you spill stuff, you spill food. Spilling food is inevitable. It's not just for kids, everyone spills food. So I don't think you should spend a lot of money on that. You should be like, hey, this chair might get broken or this chair might get stained and that's totally okay with me. I think that that is the better use of your money. So splurge on those island chairs and save money on those dining chairs. This one is going to get me canceled. I'm not gonna have a job after this one, but I do mean it. The next thing that you should save on, you should be cheap on is your duvet insert. Now I'm not saying get a crappy duvet insert. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying don't get down because there are lots of down inserts that you, let me stop saying inserts, down duvets. That's what it is. It's not an insert. It is the duvet. That's the duvet. You can get them for under 150 bucks. My favorite one is like normally $130. It goes down all the way to $100 sometimes for a king size and it's super high quality. When I was younger, down duvets were always $300, $400, $750 because of the fill power, because of the feathers. And they're all very nice. I'm not saying that you're gonna have a bad time with those. I'm just saying it's not necessary. You can still get the nice fluffy, sweatless, cozy, warm sleep that you've always wanted with a more affordable insert. Now, while I'm saying you don't necessarily need to splurge on the insert, I do think you should continue splurging on the duvet cover because duvet inserts do not touch your skin. If it is scratchy, but it's gonna keep you warm and you don't overheat in it, then what's the problem with it? The duvet cover, if that's scratchy, it's gonna keep you up at night. You're gonna think there's something crawling on you. We don't need that negativity. We wanna have a really nice soft cover that's going to wash well, that's going to hold up because we should be washing our duvet covers once a week. It's touching our skin, our faces, our blood, our sweat, our tears, all that is getting in that duvet cover. So we wanna make sure it's going to hold up. But the duvet insert, it's not coming in contact with any of that because you have a cover on it, right? You sure do. So I don't think you actually need to splurge on the insert. You can do something a lot more affordable. Recently, I've been testing out a bunch of inserts because I love to test products for you guys. And my favorite insert so far is actually like 40 bucks. It's down alternative. It's like 40 to 60 bucks. And it feels amazing, even though it's a fraction of the designer price. The next item you don't need to splurge on is cabinet hardware. Cabinet hardware can get so expensive and the fact of the matter is most companies are just spray painting it. A lot of people are taking black hardware and they're spray painting it or silver hardware and they're spray painting it black or gold or whatever. Once you actually see wear and tear on your hardware you'll notice that they just spray painted it. So you can just spray paint it too. It's better to get cheap hardware and spray paint it yourself and just take the time with the spray painting it, do the multiple coats and with a lacquer that's going to be so much more worthwhile for you than to actually actually buy really expensive hardware because really expensive hardware always misses the mark. This one time I ordered very expensive marble hardware from CB2. It was supposed to be marble. It was supposed to look like marble. I was like, did I order the wrong thing? It looked nothing like that. I returned it. Savvy also did the same thing from at home with Savvy. He posted on the story. He was literally laughing out loud because it looked so different from what you anticipated. When your hardware is super expensive, it's just not something you care about all the time. You're getting tomato sauce on it or oil on it because you're opening your cabinets all the time. It is not worth the splurge and a lot of the time there are dupes online. Whatever handle you find, take a screenshot of it and put it into a reverse image search on Google or like Amazon Lens, put it in there and trust and believe you will find a much more affordable alternative. The only time you maybe want to splurge on cabinet hardware is when you're going for gold because there's a very, 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 very clear difference between gaudy gold and a nice like sophisticated gold or brass. That's the only time you may want to pay that upcharge. Pillow covers to me should never be more than $40. It just doesn't make sense. I don't have much more to say here than pillow covers. They're just covering a pillow, right? Most people's pillow covers are just kind of decorative unless it's made out of 100% leather, like woven by the gods to me. It just doesn't make any sense as someone who wants to create pillows, who will release a pillow cover line. They don't have to be that expensive. I understand wanting to make money, but if you stain them, if you get some hair grease on them, it just feels like the end of the world. You can get cheap ones. It's more so about layering your your pillow covers. So layering a suede with a linen or this color with that color, that's where you get more of the visual interest and less so from the pillow cover itself, the one pillow cover. Don't say, oh, I'm gonna get this pillow cover and this is gonna be the end all be all and this is gonna totally fix my sofa. If you're not styling it with other pillows, with blankets, with things like that, the design is still going to fall flat. So it's not so much about the pillow cover itself and more so about how you use one pillow cover in conjunction with other ones. And it also comes down to the pillow insert. If you do not have a nice full pillow insert, your pillow looks sad. It looks sad and deflated and 
do you like feeling deflated? No, it's not a good time. So think about that before you spend 50 plus dollars on a pillow cover. Let's talk bed frames. So I've bought really expensive bed frames and really cheap bed frames. And the sturdiest bed frame I've ever had was the Ikea Mom. And then this one from Amazon that's like 96 bucks. I spent $3,000 once on a bed frame and it was so creaky. I returned it expeditiously. Your bed frame does not have to be super expensive. When it comes to buying a bed frame, you really want to think about sturdiness first. You want to make sure it can hold up you and your partner. Lots and lots of bed frames actually have weight limits and you want to check that before buying. If something only has a 300 pound weight limit and there are two of you sleeping in the bed and both of you weigh more than 150 pounds, you're kind of putting yourself at risk there and it's not supporting you in the ways that you'd like to. Another thing I'll say about bed frames is they get really expensive because you're buying the entire bed frame instead of just a headboard. But if you like the nice big drapey cover look, there's no reason to buy an entire bed frame because you can't even see it. You could just spend money on the headboard and kind of proceed like that. Last but not least, when you have a full bed frame, it makes it really hard to store things under your bed. And a lot of people only have under bed storage. So don't sacrifice that just for the vibes. I've always found that a basic upholstered bed, you can get a full bed for like 800 bucks very easily online. When you're spending multiple thousands of dollars on a bed, a bed can only do so much. Again, it's similar to the pillow cover thing the bed is the bed unless it is a really vibrant pattern or it's like woven very intricately it doesn't really look like anything until you've styled around it you've put nice bedding on it and you know the whole nine yards and then it just feels like a lot of money over time for no reason because you have to spend a lot of money on the other things as well i'd rather spend more money on my nightstands my bedding and less so on the bed itself because the bed is kind of the backdrop for everything i also don't think you should spend a lot of money on decorative accents now i believe if there's a painting that really speaks to you and maybe we're the splurge. If there was a decorative accent that's really important to your culture or something like that, it's worth the splurge. I think the occasional home item is worth the splurge. Do I think you should be spending $100 on every vase? Absolutely not. Have you heard of at home, Target, Walmart, literally any store outside? Just go outside. There are so many more affordable ways to get decorative accents. I think these days we've really glorified vases and vessels. They have to be, oh, breathtaking. They have to have a story. Not everything in your home has a story. You can enjoy something and it not be super valuable. I think that's something we need to bring back to interior design. Not everything has to have a significant feeling to you. Few things are of significance to me. And the things that are, a lot of people don't even like, but it's really just about me and how I feel because it's my home. So save your money, splurge on one thing. When it comes to decorative accents, don't Saver and everything else. Splurge more on your furniture because that's what you're sitting on all the time and that's what really needs to hold you up for many, many, many years. Your design style might change, but those foundational pieces often do not. So put your money there instead. The last thing I don't think you should splurge on are storage containers, whether that's a basket for your blankets or a basket for your Oatly. They sell them at Walmart. That is it. I have nothing else to say. Mic drop. They sell them at Walmart. Please don't waste all of your money. They sell them at your Target. A storage container does not have to be beautiful for you to use it. Dollar Tree has them for $1.25. Is it maybe a rainbow box? Yes, but if it's behind a closet that no one ever opens, save your money. There are so many better places to put your money. Vacation, education, self-care, you, just in the bank. Storage containers aren't that serious. And if someone's coming into your home and judging you for the color of your storage containers, have them Venmo you. Send them your Venmo, your Cash App, your Zelle doesn't matter, forget them. I'm telling you, just don't splurge on that. So that's it for today's video. Those are a few instances in which I think you should be cheap when it comes to your home. Not everything in your home is worth the splurge and sometimes splurging can be stupid. It can be a waste of money and we never ever wanna waste money. What things do you think you shouldn't splurge on in the home? Let me know down in the comments. And if you liked today's video, please don't forget to subscribe and until next time, have a beautiful day.